Our understanding of the universe is always expanding, and at the forefront is LIGO and their observations of gravitational wave events. I'm Eric Malachite, and today on Science Get, we're talking about scary things like black holes, and what happens when they violently slam into each other, and how detecting them helped us discover a resident in the elusive lower mass gap. Physicists will often refer to gravitational waves as ripples in space-time. So what actually are they? Well, to be honest, any object of mass that is in acceleration can create them, as long as they're not spherically or cylindrically symmetrical. For example, a spherical star will not create gravitational waves, which we will refer to as GWs from this point onward, because I'm lazy. But a lumpy star will. Yeah, spherical stars and lumpy stars are a thing. Kind of gives context to lumpy space from Adventure Time, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say. Or in the case of a supernova, if the mass is not ejected symmetrically, it will produce GWs. We've all seen the visual representation of Einstein's theory of space-time. The flat grid surface that depresses when an object of mass is introduced. Any changes of position of the masses will make ripples on the surface representing changes in our gravitational fields, or gravitational waves. The thing about these waves is that they are small, like really small. That's because gravity is the weakest of the four fundamental forces, and its waves are hard to pick up. We can only detect them in extremely specific examples, like when massive objects like black holes smash into each other. Even then, the waves physicists look for only produce displacements on the order of 10 to the negative 18th power. That's 1,000 times smaller than the diameter of a proton. Now, I'm guessing you're asking, Eric, how do we even go about detecting something so small? That would be the purpose of LIGO. LIGO stands for Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. I'll be talking about it in singular form, but it actually comprises two facilities, one in Washington and the other in Louisiana. Each facility has L-shaped vacuum tunnels about 2.5 miles long on each side. A laser is split in half at the point where they meet. The lasers bounce between mirrors in their respective arms that hang from the split point at the far end of each tunnel until they return to the intersection. If the arms remain the same length throughout, then the lasers will meet simultaneously and cancel each other out. But if a GW were to slightly stretch one arm and compress the other, the two light beams would no longer cancel each other out, yielding a light pattern at the detectors. Local interferences can get picked up by the detectors, such as heavy traffic and vibrations from construction. So, you know, modern life. Having the two facilities at opposite sides of the country helps weed out false alarms from the real GW vibrations. Firing the lasers in a vacuum is necessary to the accuracy of the results. Any kind of air current or temperature fluctuation is capable of disrupting the readings, meaning the conditions in the LIGO tunnels need to be just right. Temperature control is crucial because slight differences can bend the light due to the temperature dependent index of refraction which is a measure of how much light bends as it passes through a medium. And since the light beams have to travel in a straight line, if air disturbs the mirrors or the temperature alters and the light bends, everything will be off. Considering LIGO is the world's largest sustained ultra-high vacuum in the world, able to keep 300,000 cubic feet at one trillionth the pressure of Earth's atmosphere, there's a large margin of error. LIGO got their first hit back in 2015 when two black holes about 1.3 billion light years from Earth collided. Since then, it has collaborated with an interferometer in Italy called Virgo, and has made dozens of new discoveries. Wildly important as the discovery was, both the LIGO and the astronomical community as a whole, it was only the beginning. A few months later, the above-mentioned Italian interferometer Virgo began operations, collaborating with LIGO and increasing the accuracy of the detections. When LIGO is up and running and doing its thing, it runs for periods of time known as observing runs, with scheduled maintenance and upgrades done in between. Well, they are scheduled with one expected exception. So far, there have been three of them, 01, 02, and 03. The instruments and components making the readings are not the same as the ones from 2015. In fact, the interferometer that made the initial discovery was moved to the Nobel Prize Museum in Stockholm, Sweden in 2017, after the Nobel Prize for Physics was awarded to the LIGO team. While significant discoveries were made in the first two observing runs, including the first event detected from the collision of two in-spiraling neutron stars, an event that was corroborated by a short gamma Ray burst and subsequent discovery of the 
merger site with optical telescopes, we're going to be focusing on the latest run, O3. The O3 run began on April 1st of 2019. Insert April Fool's joke here. You see, this is the run that the astronomical community was most anticipating. All them fresh upgrades LIGO got in its downtime meant it was going to be able to see even further into the depths of space. And with the continued Virgo collaboration, that meant even better precision when finding where those GWs are coming from. This is the run where LIGO put on its big boy pants, jumped out of training mode, and tried its hand at arcade. Or as Samaya Nisanke, an astrophysicist at the University of Amsterdam and member of the LIGO collaboration would put it, we have moved from the discovery phase of GW events and are transitioning into routine. To put that another way, the O1 and O2 runs detected a combined total of 11 events. The O3 run detected several dozen. So yeah, to say that the discovery of gigantic black holes colliding pretty much became routine seems apt. This would be because LIGO had been growing its sample of black holes during this run. According to Lionel London, an astrophysicist at MIT who specializes in modeling the GW signatures of black holes in LIGO, we've seen a doubling in our number of black hole detections, and with that increase, we're getting a much better idea of the population out there. There are a few different components that make up a GW event. These can include the inspiraling of two massive bodies, the collision and the resulting aftershock. These provide opportune moments to test various theories of gravity. So of course, the information is distributed for peer review upon each discovery. This is done automatically and in real time when LIGO and Virgo simultaneously detect a potential GW signal. The alerts include a sky map of the possible point of origin called a localization, and it's distributed to astronomers as well as the LIGO Twitter feed. This this is how the Zwicky Transient Facility, ZTF, believes they discovered a flash of light emitting from a collision of two black holes. Which would be strange because, you know, light famously can't escape a black hole. It's kind of one of the things that make a black hole a black hole. Even more strange when you consider that these collisions result in an object with a combined mass of the original bodies. The counter argument being that the angular momentum of the merger would have interacted with the surrounding gases. And it was this interaction that could have created that flash. It's hard to tell right now what exactly happened. We'll need more runs to provide a wider data pool to solve that little mystery. But O3's scheduled year-long run was cut short in March of 2020 because of, well, take a wild guess on that one. LIGO has been down ever since, so where does that leave the program now? Fear not, loyal science getters, as the rest of the world is getting back into the swing of things, so are the folks at LIGO and Virgo. The next observing run, O4, is scheduled to begin three years after the end of the previous run. A month before February of 2023, LIGO is planning an engineering run. Essentially, this will allow them to run tests on the systems and get a head start on finding potential candidates. O4 will be able to peer even further into space, and will have an additional facility to collaborate its discoveries. In 2020, the Kamioka Gravitational Wave Detector, called Kagra, came online in Japan. The readings from them will make the localizations even more accurate than before. There is a LIGO India facility in the works too, but that won't be up and running until 2026, assuming everything stays on schedule. But just the addition of Kagra will be able to increase our discoveries of black holes of all sizes. Because remember, they don't need to be wildly big to be impressive finds. On that subject, we've already found something we weren't looking for at the time, but is nevertheless a discovery that is right up there in importance. Some of you may have heard of the mass gap. There's an upper and lower, but right now we'll be focusing on the latter. The lower mass gap refers to an absence of compact objects between two and three solar masses. The heaviest neutron star we had discovered was about two SM and the lightest black hole was around three. And in that range in between, Nothing for the longest time. Until, that is, an event called GW190814. This event was caused by the collision of two inspiraling black holes. Routine at that point, right? It was. Until you consider the mass of one of the black holes. One of them was a healthy 26SM. Nothing out of the ordinary, but its mate was a petite 2.6SM. Well, we're assuming it's a black hole. We don't actually know because we've never found anything in that gap before. Which is truly fascinating. What we have to look forward to next year with O4 is beyond exciting. 
The potential for new discoveries in the future with this program is enough to keep me on the edge of my seat. What else is waiting for us to find beyond our visible spectrum? How cool is the idea of black holes colliding with each other? And are you looking forward to future LIGO discoveries as well? Comment your thoughts and opinions down below. That's all we have for you today. Make sure you do all that algorithmic jazz and like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell. I have a Discord now, so make sure you join to meet up with fellow space nerds. And hey, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachi, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.